the First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete, without blame, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, haven't you been amazed by the creation of God? Watching some TV documentaries on the animal world, for example, bats find their food even in darkness with supersonic wave. Spiders' webs are so strong and flexible. That they can be compared to optical fibers. In addition, there are many marvelous things that make us admire the creation of God, such as salmon's that go back a long distance, birds that fly thousands of kilometers, woodpeckers that pack thousands of times in a second, bees that have amazing flight ability. Flapping their wings 400 times a second. So Job chapter 12 verses 7 to 9 says, "But ask the animals, and they will teach you; or the birds of the air, and they will tell you; or speak to the earth, and it'll teach you; or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this?" When we look at all the creatures of God, we can find the mysterious part of God's creation that goes far beyond human strength and knowledge. And man, consisting of spirit, soul, and body, was created to rule over all creatures. We men do not look strong or agile like tigers or lions. We cannot smell or see. Better than other animals. However, why are we called the Lord of all creatures? It is because we have spirit unlike other animals. But even apart from this, we have thinking ability with sophisticated brain. With the intelligence given by God, we have developed science. And civilizations to this day, and ruled over all creatures. The thinking and intelligence are related to the soul of man. We have learned about flesh until the last session, and now let us delve into the aspect of soul. I pray in the name of the Lord, by learning what soul is and how it operates through today's message. You will understand the original nature of man, and become a person more pleasing to God. Viewing audiences, the Oxford Dictionary defines soul as a person's inner character containing their true thoughts and feelings, and believed to exist after death. But it has different meaning in spirit. Man's brain has many cells, and a memory system is contained in the cells. For example, once you input data in a computer, it can remember and retrieve that data. Likewise, God made memory system when He created the first man. If we say the brain cells are like a vessel, It is the thought to retrieve the things that are stored in this vessel. Then the vessel, the contents, and retrieving process as a whole are referred to as soul. In brief, soul is our brain cells and their functions. In other words, putting what you see, hear, and learn into your brain with the feeling, and retrieving what you stored. 
are so. You can remember something and also think because you have soul. This way, man memorizes what he sees, hears, and feels since his birth, and a vast amount of contents are input in it. For example, soul contains everything necessary for living, language, alphabets, actions, social rules, and the like. So how enormous is the amount of one's so how enormous is the amount of one's memory if he lives for decades? But generally speaking, the brain cells are destroyed and memory system weakens if he gets old. His memory or intelligent quality varies according to how much data his soul contains. This kind of difference is evaluated as the measure of IQ, intelligent quality. IQ varies according to both the kind of genes inherited from parents and the kind of acquired things from learning or experiences. Because of this difference in each one's IQ, each one gains different results, although everyone makes the same effort. Our parents should understand this and teach their children accordingly. But some parents give hard time to their children. They compare their children with their neighbor's children. They say, that boy in our neighborhood is getting such good grades. And why can't you do as well as he does? But it's not that their child does not study, but his grades do not go up even though he tries. You compare your children with other children. You should say, actually, your mother and father do not have good intelligence so you do not excel in studies. But you only blame your children. If your children only play around and hang around with bad friends, they should be scolded. But if their grades do not go up although they try, why do you compare them with your neighbor's children? You should rather say, Son, I am sorry. I'm not so smart and you inherited it. But you can still try. You should rather comfort them in this way. One's IQ can increase with one's effort although it is inherited from the parents. Just as a computer with greater capacity can contain more things and have better functions, a person with better IQ can memorize many more things and utilize them more efficiently. So parents should not scold their children for their low grades or force them to do something more than their ability. Your children's IQ is the same as the different capacity of different computers. You should understand the ability of your child, guide him according to his ability, and help him develop something according to his own aptitude. You should develop the best ability of your child. Edison used to fail in his class. He didn't do well in his classes. But he became the number one in invention in the world. Also, some students do not excel in studies, but they are good athletes. Also, some are good in music, and some others are good in art. 
You should help them develop their talent according to their aptitude. You shouldn't just tell them to study only. If you can help them develop their own skills, how happy they would be. Also, IQs can increase by one's effort. Even if people are born with the same IQ, they can develop their IQ as they try. But believers can implant what they learn not by thinking, which is the operation of soul, but by their spirit through the Holy Spirit. They can study this way and become great men. I gave your sermon with the title Secret of Succeeding in Studies, so it will be very helpful to you if you refer to it again. Viewing audiences, so far, we have looked into what soul is, and now, what kind of operation does the soul do? We can say our body is the vessel containing our spirit and soul. And the soul forms our character, nature, ways of living, and judging standard through the function of thinking, and it has great influence in forming the field of our heart. Man's spirit is not separate from his soul, but is closely related with it. By the way, the operation of soul of today is different from that of Adam before he committed sin. When God created Adam, he formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and he became a living spirit. Namely, Adam was not a man of perishable flesh, but a living spiritual being with imperishable body. He had flesh and bones like us, but his body was imperishable. This man's spirit was the master of him, and his soul played the role of a slave only obeying the spirit. It is true that his soul had the function of storing knowledge and thinking, but the soul followed the command of the Spirit, obeying the word of truth. For this reason, Adam did not have any kind of untruth or wicked thoughts. However, Adam disobeyed the command of God and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As a result, his spirit died. The way God said, you will surely die when you eat of it and a great change occurred to him. Adam's spirit died and he became a man of flesh with only his soul and body. His body was supposed to return to the dust the way he had been taken from it. About this, Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 says, Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. God said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. Then are you a man or not? We are all men, right? But what does God say? His spirit will not strive with man forever. But then is God with you or not? Is his spirit with you or not? He is. But the Bible says, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. But there is a condition. It is because he is flesh. God is not with man because he is flesh. He is a man, but God will not strive with the man of flesh. So if he becomes a man of spirit by being born again as a new creature, he will be with you. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 says, by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you are taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. God formed Adam with the dust of the ground, made him a living spirit, created the Garden of Eden, and led him there. But when he disobeyed and was cursed, as God said, you will surely die, his spirit died. 
and he went back to flesh. So he had to be driven out to this earth. He was driven out from the Garden of Eden in the second heaven and went back to dust after his death. Since Adam had been the lord of all creatures but returned to the dust by his sin of disobedience, all creatures on earth were cursed and doomed to perish. Romans chapter 8 verses 19 to 21 says that creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. But the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. How did the operation of soul change after Adam sinned? When Adam was a living spirit, he communicated with God who is spirit and was taught by the truth. But after his spirit died, he was cut off from communicating with God and his soul began to play the role of the master in him. If the servant rules over his master, what will happen? It'll be a mess. Our enemy Satan and the devil control the soul belonging to untruth. Satan is against God, and so it began to plant what is against the truth into the man's soul through the man's thoughts. Since then, Satan has planted evil, wickedness, sin, and what is hostile to God. For example, if somebody strikes you, Satan gives you the thought that it is right for you to strike him back. It is the thought of untruth. The truth is, you turn to him the other cheek also. Or, it makes you think, don't you have pride? Don't just stand like a fool. This way, he plants in you the thought that it is right to take revenge. God tells us to love our enemies, but the devil makes you take revenge. However, it's not truth. God's word tells us to bless those who persecute us and love our enemies. But Satan inputs what is against the truth in us through our thoughts. As a result, it makes us think it is right to take our revenge and have it as our conscience and judging standard. Man's conscience is not made by the truth of God. It is made of the things that come from darkness of Satan. A man begins to make himself since the age of five with the things he sees, hears, and learns. Now, through these spirit, soul, and body lectures, you should find and understand yourself. You can break yourself only when you find it is wrong. You die every day and break yourself so that only the truth of the Christ will dwell in you and you can go into spirit. That's why you should understand about yourself. There, Pastor Myung Lee, who are you? What is the self in you? Is yourself your name Myung Lee? Of course not. But you are Myung Lee, right? But yourself is not Myung Lee. What then is this Myung Lee? People named that physical form Myung Lee. So this form may be Myung Lee, but it's not herself. If the name Myung Lee is herself, there are many other Myung Lees with the same name. So you may wonder, Oh, there is one more of myself. Is it true? It's just a name. The name is only for the form 
and appearance. It is not the essence. The content is something else. But then, with this one's self, they say, do you even have conscience? Or you don't even have conscience. Then does this person who says that have conscience? This conscience is made with the darkness of this world, and therefore, its standard of judgment is not right. How can we judge others with this conscience? That is why God tells us, not to judge or condemn, it is evil and sin. What you think is not always right. You judge others because you still have evil. You judge and condemn because you have plank in your eyes. But is your conscience good? It's not. It is not good in God's sight. It's been made that way. If somebody hits you, you have to hit him back. Otherwise, your pride is hurt. You have to take your revenge. If you don't, you rather become a bad person. But God's word is the opposite. If you do not take the revenge, you feel ashamed and consider yourself a fool or a coward. Your conscience is made in a wrong way. That is why your standard of judgment is not right. Thus, what you judge and condemn cannot be correct. In God's sight, it is sin and evil. That's why you have to find yourself through these spirit, soul, and body lectures. You should realize how wrongly yourself is made. You can become a man of Christ only when you break that self. According to each one's conscience and judging standard formed this way, he comes to have self-righteousness and show various evil acts accordingly. The growth of a child testifies to this fact. A newborn baby does not know what goodness or evil is and only acts by instinct. But as he grows up, he receives wickedness and untruth from the world through thoughts to the extent that he is influenced by his soul. In this process, his heart becomes stained with wickedness. Of course, one accepts evil in different measures according to his circumstances. But as Satan puts what is against truth in him through thoughts, evil is accumulated in his heart. As a result, his heart cannot but become bad field of heart away from good heart. Men inherit their parents' sinful nature where evil was planted for such a long time through untruthful thoughts. Moreover, they continue to store in their heart evil things that are planted in them by Satan through thoughts. How stubborn, proud, and poor the heart of man has become. Also, untruth is stored in heart through the operation of soul, and it becomes each one's judging standard and value. So, many people commit terrible sins as they think is right in their eyes. They even do the things of animals. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18 says, I also thought as for men, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. When God tests men, they are not different from animals. By saying they are like animals, God is considering highly of us. In this world full of sins, there are many people who are worse than animals. Let me give you a couple of examples to help you understand this. Even the animals do not discard their young. They try to keep them. The birds make their nest on top of tall trees for protection from animals. 
But snakes can go up there to eat the egg. Then what does the bird do? It would cry so much to confuse the snake and lead it to another place. It would try all its best. Of course, not all animals do this. Rabbits eat their young if they are not comfortable enough. Some animals eat their young, but most animals love them. But how is it with human beings? Most of them love their children, but some people don't. There are people who throw away their babies in restrooms. Recently, there was a one person who threw her baby in the toilet of an airplane. Some of them kill their children in secret. If they find it difficult to raise their children, they send them for adoption. Some people leave their babies in front of the gate of another house. It's a fortunate case. Some parents, after they get divorced, do not want to take care of their children. Some parents fight to get their children, but some other parents don't want their children at all. Why do they forsake their children like orphans? It's just one example. And there are so many things like this that we cannot understand. Before they accept God, their spirit is dead. They do the deeds of animals. The children beat their parents too. Sometimes they poison their parents in an attempt to receive their inheritance money more quickly. They put some poison to make their parents die more quickly in hospitals so that they will inherit the money. Some parents sue their children and children sue their parents. In order to carry out the whole duty of man, you should revive your dead spirit. This will be explained in detail later when I preach about spirit. Viewing audiences, you should remember one thing when you understand the operation of soul. The thinking process of soul requires a vessel to contain thoughts, namely brain. By the way, what would happen to you if your brain is damaged in a traffic accident? Some people save their lives but lose their memory caused by brain damage. They can eat, sleep, and feel something but they are now completely different men. Then what will happen to those with memory blackout when they go to heaven? By the power of God, they can remember what they couldn't remember on earth. God revives the parts that are destroyed so their soul can function perfectly again. Likewise, when we go to heaven, not only our spirit but also our soul will go into heaven together. Soul here refers to the soul belonging to spirit, not the soul with untruths of this world. Only the soul that belongs to the truth will enter into heavenly kingdom. Jesus said when he breathed his last on the cross, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Acts chapter 7 verse 59 says, While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, 
Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. My spirit in these two verses indicates the spirit along with the soul belonging to truth. He was becoming a martyr saying, receive my spirit, which means spirit with the soul belonging to the truth. Likewise, for the one who is saved, his spirit and soul will go to heavenly kingdom together. Viewing audiences, we have looked into the operation of soul so far. Then how should you use your soul to become a man who is pleasing to God? Now you have a question. What will happen to you if God calls your spirit now since you haven't cast off all your sins and evil and become fully sanctified? You have hatred and ill feelings against others. You get offended by such a small thing. You have betraying heart. You haven't gone into spirit yet. So what will happen when you get to the kingdom of heaven now? You don't have to worry. Why? The soul belonging to flesh cannot go up to the heavenly kingdom. Only the soul belonging to spirit will go up. That is why in heaven there is no evil at all. There is no falsehood, hatred, ill feelings, or anything evil. Even if you have some evil remaining in you in the kingdom of heaven, there will be no evil at all. Why? It's because the soul belonging to flesh cannot go up. You don't have to remember any evil. Only the soul that belongs to spirit will go up. In this way, spirit and soul go up together. That is why those who have not fully cultivated the whole spirit cannot go into New Jerusalem. Only when you fully cultivate the whole spirit, your spirit and soul will be perfect like the Father and enter New Jerusalem. If you do not cultivate your soul to belong to spirit completely, you have deficiency in spirit. You are like a child. So you can only go to the paradise, the first kingdom, or the second kingdom. Because you are not fully grown up in spirit, if you go into New Jerusalem, you cannot live with the people there. They are so holy, and the light itself, so you cannot live with them. I explained Satan brings doubt into one's heart by controlling one's soul and makes him have untrue thoughts that are against God's heart. When somebody's soul is controlled by Satan, he is a man of soul. This kind of person cannot accept the word of God into his heart because of human thoughts stored in his brain. As a result, he can neither realize spiritual things nor go into spirit. God the Father never wants his children to become men of soul. We should be men of spirit because the Father is spirit. For this, we should always keep ourselves from Satan's control by blocking our thought of untruth. Instead, we should listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit who co controls our heart and make our soul obey His voice. When we hear the Word of God, we should receive it joyfully with the Amen and continue to pray until we realize its special meaning in our heart so that we can be filled with and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Only then can our spirit, not our soul, play the role of the Master in us and we can quickly enter into spirit, enjoying the deep fellowship with God every day. When our fleshly thoughts, namely the soul belonging to the flesh, are demolished, will have soul belonging to spirit only, so this soul will obey our spirit. Likewise, when the master plays the role of the master and the soul becomes the servant, we say our soul is prosperous, then everything go well with us. Also, we'll receive the blessing of health. That is why God tells us to make our soul prosperous. But for those whose souls are not prosperous, their soul is the master, and it controls the original master, breaking up the order. 
Let us say the servant is playing the role of the master, commanding his master to do this and that. Then the family or household is falling off. When the master plays the role of the master and servant of the servant, the household will be in order and spiritually this is when our soul is prosperous. If our soul is prosperous, everything will go well with us and will be healthy. Let me conclude the message. Viewing audiences, today I talk to you about the soul belonging to the flesh. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 says, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creature that was its name. This shows that Adam had already great intelligence when he was first created. Likewise, men have brain cells. They put in them what they see, hear, or feel and retrieve the stored knowledge and information. All this is called soul. Satan controls this soul and Satan plants more and more evil into man's heart through their untrue thoughts. The reason we learn the spirit, soul, and body is to understand the operation of soul and make it the kind of soul that God wants. In other words, you should not be controlled by Satan through soul, but have your spirit play the role of the master to manage and control your soul. This way, you can recover the lost image of God. Also, you can recover proper relationship with God the Father and enjoy the authority and power to rule over all things that Adam used to have. So, as said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. You can become a new creation in Christ. From the next session, I'll preach about the most important topic, spirit. Through today's message, I pray in the precious name of the Lord that you will enjoy the privilege of God's children and be guided to the way of blessings, always communicating with God the Father. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing power of God. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. 
all terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive, rejoin broken bones, and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away, may the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God. I have received his answers and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
한번 해볼까? 목자님의 권능이 있으니 세계 최고의 무용수가 될수 있어 아름다운 열매들이 나와 전나 